Hello everybody, welcome back to more viewer coaching. Today we've got Fefup, or Crabman as they're known on Steam, who says they are in plat and they think spacing, spacing and approaching is one of their problems, and they're also not sure what else to look out for. So let's help them uh, along their road, along their route, and maybe to help to get diamond in the future. So uh, the first thing that I am noticing, oh, also I should mention, I normally do these on stream today though, uh, I'm just doing it off, off stream on recording. I couldn't stream today, so I just asked my Discord. Uh, hopefully that's okay with you all. Anyway, as always, I play a little bit different Differently, try and get a sense of how people normally play and the first thing I am noticing uh, is one of the most common habits that we see in these here parts in these coaching sessions which is the idea of approaching with movement versus approaching with attacks that is insane okay well I tried to save there but Zil strength is something else even on Barraza um, but yeah approaching with attacks so rather than uh, getting into range and then attacking it's kind of like attacking in order to approach like that for example that side air especially on a character like Barraza one of the more laggier characters especially on the axe uh, you want to be very, very careful with something like your axe there's like your axe there's you want to pick options if you're going to axe there in terms of safety, right? Even though I axe there there and I missed, I was still safe because I, I had momentum as opposed to doing it stuck in place or like freezing right here. I'm going to get punished for it. So be very, very careful about stuff like high risk options with a lot of recovery frames uh, using those to approach like right there. I kind of knew you were going to stare because you were falling down. You made it a little bit obvious. So try maybe falling down, mixing things up and using the quickness of some other moves like end light to your advantage, get in my range. And then I start becoming afraid of that and I need to avoid the air if that makes any sense like once I stop worrying about the side air that's when I'm vulnerable so yeah make sure to use the range of different options I'll try and show off some axe end lights given that we're both both playing at this game this is a super quick burst option it's probably the best move on axe along with downlight I would say uh, so make sure to utilize that and side light as you can see right there is really good for punishes uh, now here in the red let's see how you try and get a knockout here I'm gonna stay generally pretty grounded because I know that axe side light if you go for it I won't be killed by it like right here, I'm totally okay. I got hit by damage, that's 30 damage combo, but I'm still totally fine. The thing I have to watch out for is end light. Uh, signatures, Barraza has slower signatures, so I'm not too worried about those. And I definitely think you're rushing this kill a little bit. Uh, I'm not really in the kill range and you're still using these signatures, like I'm far away. And it seems like that kind of similar problem where you're just approaching with the sig and hoping to get a knockout with it, as opposed to getting in close into my range and then threatening a kill like that. That was perfect right there. Now that side light into side air, I didn't dodge it, so it got the KO and that's very effective. Maybe you knew I wasn't dodging earlier and uh, you read that and, and got the KO so that's great. Uh, in this red here I would definitely start looking for more things like the uh, the axe end lights for example or, or maybe a down sig when you're close read a dodge in uh, bait out movement like that. If you notice how I'm moving when I'm in kill percent sorry I got mixed up with my words there uh, that's how you can avoid some of the axe moves jumping around staying relatively grounded uh, because those axe moves unless you threaten it like you weren't really threatening with end lights I wasn't too afraid of it. So you want to make your opponents afraid threaten with those killing options. Game number two here on Apocalypse. Now Spear is kind of a similar story in terms of killing where it struggles a little bit especially on the ground so as I get into kill percent in this game I'm going to try and just stay super grounded and see how you handle it maybe throw out a side sig with Bryn that's a very common option um, but yeah you also you mentioned approaching so that is the biggest thing I think is getting into range first it kind of seems like you panic a little bit and just throw out options uh, and then whenever it's that split second where you you and your opponent are pretty close together you tend to panic and, and throw out something right away so if I'm a baiting player like if I'm floating like this which we mentioned earlier in the week I can kind of just bait something out and right when we're in the range you notice you start to attack right that side air is another good example again if you're playing the axe you can look out for that side air I did it with momentum falling that one as well so even if you read it it's a lot harder to punish now it is still a risk it's something that you got to be careful throwing out because axe side air is pretty punishable especially if you're anticipating it especially if you can react to it um, but yeah the, it's one of those things that you want to make sure that when you're throwing it out it's high value so I'm gonna again play relatively grounded here and we'll see how you handle it Bryn has a very good option to cover it uh, with that uh with that end sig so yeah you also seem extremely signature happy in places where it's not really warranted like that down sig for example even if it hits me it doesn't even come close to killing me not only because i'm in the orange but because it's on the other side of the map so i'd be really careful about throwing out signatures when you start to notice your opponent is getting into kill percent uh, because it's pretty risky now that was just a straight up read if i dodged that direction it would have killed me so I, I can't really knock that at all you also probably notice that i'm dodging in the upward direction now let's see how you cover me coming back to the wall here uh that end light yeah no, it's totally it's 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 fine i, I did a dodge a bit of a mix-up so I can't really knock that as well now coming back to stage do you kind of panic attack yeah that's another thing right so if you're coming down and you have no options do you always attack you do that's something to be aware of right if you're floating above someone you always kind of come down and attack which means that if I'm patrolling this ground right like I mentioned being in kill percent I'm kind of just patrolling this ground area I don't really have to worry 
worry too much about when you're going to attack because I know it's going to be right as you fall down there. I messed up my movement there. I meant to get a side air, but that's you kind of saw the idea anyway, hopefully. Uh, so let's see once again, falling down with an attack. Yeah. So try and mix things up a little bit more like that. I, I think maybe that time you didn't attack because I was in the air and you saw it wouldn't hit. But like right there again, uh, falling down with an attack. So that could be uh, one of the things that you mentioned when you struggle with approaching is always going with the same approach, a linear approach, or as I called it earlier, like an option A kind of thing, uh, where it's the most obvious option. If someone's below you, you attack. If someone's in front of you, you attack, as opposed to uh, creating the scenario with your movement where they are forced to avoid it or forced to dodge or where they can't react to it, where even if you guess incorrectly, like you've seen a few options where despite me being in your range, I attack and I miss and I guess incorrectly. But at the very least, I was creating the scenario with my movement and I will have a higher success rate from doing that than just attacking and hoping it's going to hit. So it's the same thing right here. I'm in kill percent. You're falling down with side airs. You're trying to get anything really desperately. Uh, and I try to I try and be aware of that, right? When you get into these moments where someone is near death, you get really, really desperate to get the KO and you kind of tunnel vision. You lose focus on your movement on the other areas of your game uh, that throughout the match earlier have been pretty good. All right, game number three here on Miami Dome. Now this map is a little bit different because of these platforms. You can land on them, you can dash on them and stuff like that, as opposed to Apocalypse where there's only one and it moves around. It's not at these set heights all the time. So now I'm gonna try playing a little bit floaty and see how you try and contest that. Do you wait it out? That was good. You didn't fall for the bait. Uh, you gave me some space to land, but that's totally okay. It's better than, you know, falling for the bait and, and getting hit. So that's good. Right away, I see that that doesn't seem to be one of your main issues. So I'll swap it up. Uh, I'll try something else. What I'm gonna try to do now is try to do dash dancing. But dashing in and out and see if you fall for the approaches. Yep, because it seems like as someone gets close to you, you really get an inkling that you need to attack them. Like, uh, by all means, I must attack, like that downlight, for example. If I downlighted that, that would have been a punish and stuff like that. So definitely be aware of when your opponent gets close to you. You tend to, or, or at the very least, it looks like you get a little bit nervous and you feel the need to attack them back, as opposed to being able to evade with just your movement alone. So something that I recommend trying out and practicing is trying to not get hit from your opponents uh, just by moving. Don't, don't even attack them just get close to them and, and and just move around and see how you can avoid them uh, you're gonna get hit but at the very least you'll get more comfortable not getting hit during the match and then you'll be able to create opportunities to hit your opponent as opposed to just trying to do it by getting a hit there i misinputted there but that, that's okay as you can see right there like i didn't have the opportunity necessarily to land an axe down light and i went for it anyway and because of that whoops uh because of that i i could have gotten hit i could have gotten punished and so like you want to know that when you're trying to hit someone you're ensuring that is going to be a hit right as opposed to just kind of throwing it out and hoping they fall into it with their movement uh, and so that's kind of what i'm talking about when i'm when i'm saying like use your movement to your advantage you want to move yourself in a way that they are forced to kind of react to it and also they're now in your ranges that's optimal for you to get your punishes and everything like that so uh, be aware of that now let's edge guard let's see how you play this edge guard i'm gonna kind of hug this wall a little bit gonna downsig on the guitars that's a common option we'll see how your spacing is if that's something to work on because ragnar guitar downsig if you use it right there i would have been able to stare it so it's good you didn't bite or at, at the very least you didn't do it when uh when it was unsafe that's insane that that worked i was trying to fall down so that <laughs> so that you would be forced to edge guard me but i guess falling down into a slide charge sig is not the best thing to do uh no you're a god gamer i got so outplayed <laughs> uh maybe i should be taking coaching lessons i honestly probably should because everyone can learn stuff from a third party anyway back to the topic at hand here uh, let's see how you kind of handle this early percent when you're in kill percent do you throw out a lot of risky moves yeah looks like you're throwing out a lot of side airs and stuff like that like i mentioned in the first first game there uh, a lot of those side airs are pretty high risk okay that was good you're tracking my movement now um i'm just gonna go for the the combo there um, but yeah, tracking movement is another thing to look at if you're struggling with approaching. A lot of the time people just think about uh, approaching and attacking as baiting out options and, and reacting to everything, right? Being an aggressive player is all about reacting on time and, uh, and, and stuff like that. But a lot of it is paying attention and reading movement. So when do people tend to jump? At what distance away? When do they tend to jo dodge in neutral? Maybe it's not forced out. Maybe it's just something they do, like that horizontal dodge right there. My horizontal dodge right there. Uh, that vertical dodge, right? So those are things to look at too. Jump timing. When people whiff, how soon after do they act? Do they try and immediately attack? Do they try and immediately jump? Those are also things to look at because if you're not in the perfect range for an attack, well, you can look at those other things and punish that instead. Punishing their second thing rather than their first thing. Uh, anyway, I hope that helps. <laughs> that NSYNC kill was absolutely crazy. I got demolished and uh, yeah, good luck on getting diamond.